Welcome to another Magecast I.O. All the previous Magecasts have focused on Beehat and normal projects. We've seen how to set it up and configure it. Now let's take a look at how it can be used with Magento. Now for Magento, there's a special version of Beehat called Beehat Mage. It's exactly the same as Beehat. In fact, it is Beehat. This is just a plugin for Beehat that allows Beehat to know about Magento. It's got some basic step definitions pre-built, as well as fixtures to allow easy creation of products, orders and more. So during this Magecast, we'll look to see how to install and configure Behat Mage for Magento. Look at some of the step definitions. We will write. We will also write our first scenario for adding a product to the cart. So I've already set up Magento 1901, but we'll cover how to set up a base box in Vagrant in an up and coming lesson. Now there's nothing special that I have done other than install the sample data. When we installed Behat previously, we added it to our composer.json file. And even though we're now working in Magento, there's no difference. We need to create a composer.json file at the root of our project. Now, if you head over to Behat Mage on GitHub, there's a detailed readme for how to get started with the setup and a good scenario to get you started. It's worth pointing out that currently the developed branch is Behat 2. Now, there's nothing wrong with Behat 2. However, I like to use Behat 3 as it has some pretty cool features that we'll be looking at in future lessons. So instead of defining dev developer a version in our composer file, we want to add feature slash Behat free branch that has been upgraded to work with Behat free. Now there are a few things that we need to do in our composer file. Required dev obviously needs the Behat information. So we start by requiring mage test magento Behat extension, not forgetting to pull in the dev feature Behat free branch. We then need to remember to include the assertion library expect, so bozza php2 expect. And if you remember from the previous screencast, we also need Behat Mink, Mink Extension, Mink Goat Driver, and the Mink Selenium Driver. And just for convenience, let's make sure that all of the bin directories, the executables, are located in the bin directory. Finally, we need to configure some PSR auto loading so that Behat extension can find Magento. So we define a new node in the JSON string for auto load. We're using the PSR0 standard. So there's no namespace, but we want to map a series of paths. So we do app code local, app code community, app code core, public app, public lib. So that covers all the main Magento areas that we'll be accessing. Next up, we need to configure Behat to know about the plugin. Let's create a behat.yaml file with the following contents. We want to say for our default suite, we want paths to be feature site, and we want the context to be the site context. And we want to define another suite called system, where the paths are going to be features system, and it's got a context of system context. We want to enable some extensions. We want to pull in the Sensio Labs page object extension and reference the namespaces to be page. We then want to pull in the Mage Test Gento extension, which hasn't got any configuration options. Finally, we want to set up Mink. So we do Behat Mink extension with base URL. We want to tell it to use Selenium 2. So we pass in the web driver host of localhost and we say that our browser is Firefox. Now, if we try and run Behat from our host machine, we're going to get an error message about the connection to Redis. This isn't anything to worry about. It's because Behat is trying to connect using mage.php. 
So we have so we have to remember that we need to connect via the virtual box before running BHAM. Now, if you have Xdebug installed, there's a potential that you might see the following error when running BHAM, which is the PHP error, maximum function nesting level of 100 for each support in. If you do see that error message, don't panic. The fix is simple. We just need to edit the xdebug.ini file. My CentOS machine is in etc php.d xdebug.ini, but the path may vary depending on your system. The fix is as simple as adding xdebug.max underscore nesting underscore level equals 200 to that file. Well, the need to tell, we then need to tell the OS that we are running applications in a headless mode. So we can run display equals one, which tells the machine to run display equals one. Then we run xfb run with a screen resolution and we want to run the Java Selenium command. So what this does is sets the display variable one then starts xsvfb with a new screencast, a new screen at 1280 resolution. And we start Selenium and run it in the background. Once we have all these, then we're ready to start running all of our scenarios. Let's recap where we are. So our VM is all ready and we have Magento running. We're still developing on our local host as it's Vagrant, but because MageB Hat has hard dependencies on Magento and it's bootstrap, we're going to be running B Hat from within the VM. Let's initialize for the first time as we have seen previously. We run bin B Hat hyphen hyphen in it, just so we have some folders and a base feature context to work from. As we know from last time, this creates us all of the required folder dependencies. However, as we've installed the Magento extension, we need to make some amends to the context. So if we open up our feature context.php, we need to use mage test Magento extension context Magento context, and we need to ensure that we extend from Magento context. Let's write a scenario just to validate that our install is working and that we have BHAT configured as we expect. So let's create a new feature file and we'll call it testing Magento inside of the system. So feature testing that BHAT and Magento are working together. As we know, we need an in order. So in order to continue working on Magento, who are they going to be the actors? So in this case, as a Magento developer, I need to be able to configure BHAT and Magento. So let's create a scenario that's actually going to be tested. So we want to test that the base URL is configured in the database. So what's our given? So given there is a base URL configuration set, then our assertion, then I should see the value being in a string HTTP mageSIO.dev. This is just the URL that I'm using locally for my virtual box or Vagrant. This can be anything that you choose. So let's run this so that we can append our snippets to the feature context. So bin bhat hyphen hyphen append snippets. Now, it's not a scenario that we're gonna be running over and over again, but at least we know that mage is accessible for us. So we've got our configuration, or our feature context has been generated with the steps. We now need to actually implement them. So if we open up the class, the feature context, this time it's system context, let's then create a private base URL. And then in the given, so let's set the base URL to equal mage get base URL. So it's using the Magento namespace to get us the base URL of the store. Then if we move on to the then, then I should see the value being if we update the string being passed in to be URL, we can use the assertion library expect and we can say expect this base URL, which is the one that we're getting from Magento, to be URL, which is what we're passing in in our scenario. Now let's run bhat and make sure that the database is the correct value for the store URL that we want. Great, we have bhat and Magento configured and working together. Let's get back to writing a scenario that actually interacts with Magento. Under the site suite, let's add a new feature file with the following. So we create a new feature file remembering in site folder, and we'll call it add to cart.feature. So feature, a visitor can add items to the cart and shop. Why? So in order to make a purchase, 
As a visitor to the site, I need to be able to see the product page and add the item to the cart. So if we create our scenario of adding the item to the cart, we can say, given I am on the product page, when I add the item to the cart, then I should see the total items in my basket is, and we'll create this as a variable, so in quotes, one. Now let's save that, and from here we can run bhat to append our snippets. So we run bin bhat hyphen hyphen suite equals default, because we only want the default suite to run, hyphen hyphen append snippets. Once that's run, we know that all of our, our site context has been updated with the boilerplate code from our step definitions. So if we open up site context, and we can say, look at the given. So I'm on a product page. We'll use this get session visit. Remembering from last lesson, this is where we actually visit the page. And here we're going to put in the fully qualified domain plus the path to aviator sunglasses. So it's what we found from our Magento sample data. So we'll say when I add the item to the cart. So this time again, we're going to call the get session, get page, find. And we're looking for the add to cart button. And we're going to click it so the button has been added to the cart. Now our assertion, the then. So we want to say page total equals this get session, get page, find. And we're looking for a div on the page with a CSS selector of count. And we're going to call get text on that. That's going to get us the actual text value. And we know that that's the top mini cart item count. And we're going to use the assertion library expect to say that we expect the page total, which is what we've just found on the HTML markup, to be the string value that we've placed. Now, let's run only the default suite. If we do bin bhat hyphen hyphen suite equals default, and this time we should see all green as we're adding the item to the cart. Magento redirects us to the checkout page, and there's a mini basket at the top with the count of the products in the basket. What's great here is that it's not taken that much effort to get all of this working together. Most of it has been configuration on the VM and of the application. Yet you can see how powerful this type of testing can be when working on Magento or any application for that matter. Imagine running this in CI or in each iteration of a TDD cycle.